give you an opportunity to uh, continue, but uh, let's start off by talking about the uh, OVC conference and the ACC conference, because I think at one time you were part of uh, the ACC conference, and let's see if you can, <coughs> however you wish to uh, deal with them okay. as two entities here. Well, I, I think that uh, one thing, first of all, that our players need to understand, one of our goals is mm -hmm. to win the conference championship. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, uh, we play, uh, I believe it's four classics. Mm -hmm. and I know the excitement is there and the enthusiasm is there and the players get excited and the fans get excited about it. But we also need to get excited about our conference games. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I've learned is that winning a conference championship is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Winning every game is very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, my experience has shown me that it, within conferences, the ACC or, or the SEC or whatever, mm -hmm. you have teams that generally compete for the conference championship every year. Mm -hmm. You have teams that generally don't compete for the conference championship mm -hmm. every year. I think that if you look at the, the comparisons that I have studied to the OVC and looking at the ACC, I would like to think that Tennessee State University could become mm -hmm. the Florida State or the Miami mm -hmm. of the OVC. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Florida State and Miami the Virginia Techs are the teams that mm -hmm. uh, have recently, of course, Miami and Virginia Tech just recently came into the mm -hmm. ACC, but before mm -hmm. they did, Florida State basically dominated mm -hmm. the ACC. They were the team to beat mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. And because, and when you become the team to beat, what our players are going to have to understand, just like in the ACC and the OVC, mm -hmm. is that when you play every week a team in your conference, you're going to get their best shot. Mm -hmm. And our players need to understand that. You can't afford to have an off week. And it's the same thing in every conference you go in. If you're the top dog in that conference, if you're the team that preseason everybody says is going to win, then it doesn't matter. You have to understand that even the team that's in last place, when they play you, you are going to get their best shot. They're going to play their best game of the year. Mm -hmm. You're their rival. You're the team that they got to beat because they can lose five games and beat you because mm -hmm. you're supposed to be top dog. Mm -hmm. And boy, we had a great season. Made a season. So mm -hmm. our players need to understand, first mm -hmm. of all, we've got to win and become that top dog. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to become the top dog in the OBC. Mm -hmm. I want to be the team that the other teams say, hey, we got to beat them if we want to win the conference yeah. championship. Mm -hmm. And I think that as far as the, the, the level of competition, you know, there are a lot of Division I players in the OBC. I've watched tape. You know, mm -hmm. we've got some on our football team mm -hmm. right here. And mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, uh, even though the conference may say OBC or ACC, mm -hmm. there's, there's a high level of competition mm -hmm. in both leagues. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and, and of course, uh, when you uh, talk in terms of the ACC, mm -hmm. you've had uh, quite a bit of experience yes. in, in that area. Why don't you talk about uh, some of the things that you've been involved okay. in and some of your own uh, athletic exploits uh, okay. during uh, your earlier career? Well, I, I played at University of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, when we came in as freshmen, I think our varsity was 0-10 or 2-8. and 8. Mm -hmm. When we left as seniors, we were ACC champions. Mm -hmm. So we built, so I was part of a program mm -hmm. that you came in was not very good mm -hmm. and saw what it took to build it. And when I left, we were ACC champions in 1971-72. Mm -hmm. uh, we played in the, in the uh, Gator Bowl against Georgia. I was voted the most valuable player mm -hmm. uh, in the Gator Bowl. My senior year, I won the uh, Frank Porter Graham Award, which is awarded to the uh, top 10 graduating seniors from the University of North Carolina. I won the uh, Brian Piccolo Award, which was given to the uh, most courageous player. I had an injury, serious injury mm -hmm. before the season started and came back mm -hmm. and uh, played from that. The one thing I think that I've been very blessed mm -hmm. with as far as coaching mm -hmm. and the opportunity to win is that I've had some excellent coaches that I've coached under mm -hmm. and I've coached at some excellent schools. Uh, I came back coaching at the University of North Carolina, mm -hmm. alma mater, and from there I went to the University of Florida and the head coach there was Doug Dickey, mm -hmm. uh, who ended up being, who was a head football coach at Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. University of Tennessee and mm -hmm. also the athletic director most recently mm -hmm. at uh, the University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot of things from Coach Dickey. Uh, from there I went to the University of Kansas. Mm -hmm. uh, from there I went to Colorado with uh, Chuck Fairbanks who mm -hmm. was coaching the pros with the New England Patriots and he mm -hmm. came to Colorado. From there I went to Northwestern University and the head coach there was Dennis Green mm -hmm. who's now the uh, head coach of the uh, Cardinals. And uh, there was a lot to be learned there. Dennis Green w had an excellent mind as far as offensive football was concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, threw the ball, he didn't care much about running it, but mm -hmm. uh, threw the ball all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so that gave me uh, experience in the ACC, mm -hmm. in the SEC, uh, in the Big Eight, in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. And then from there I came back to the ACC at Wake Forest with Bill Dewey, mm -hmm. who was my, high my uh, college coach at the University of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, of course, uh, developed a team there and ended up going to uh, a bowl game and playing well. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and then when Coach Dooley uh, retired, uh, I got my one double A experience. I went to mm -hmm. Dartmouth mm -hmm. in the Ivy League. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that every coach that <laughs> coaches should coach in the Ivy League right, okay. because those young men do not receive athletic financial mm -hmm. uh, aid. Mm -hmm. And they're there because they want to. Mm -hmm. And you need to experience your best player coming to you on Thursdays before your biggest game saying, Coach, I won't be at practice today because I got an exam tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I really need to study. You need that, okay. you know, you need that experience. You need that experience because uh, that doesn't happen very often on Division One level. <laughs> but you need that. And all of a sudden, you think about it. You want to say something. You say, well, wait a minute now. Okay. I can't tell this kid he's putting a scholarship in jail because he's not on a scholarship. <laughs> So you okay, really need that experience. And from there, mm -hmm. I went to East Carolina mm -hmm. University. Uh, and the thing that I remember most about East Carolina University, at, which is tied in to UNC, mm -hmm. is that we played uh, the University of Miami twice at East Carolina University. We played them down in the Orange Bowl. We, be, we handed them their worst loss that had ever been uh, handed mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. They came up, we played them in, in Raleigh, beat them again. Mm -hmm. And this past season, we played the University of Miami at, at the University of North mm -hmm. Carolina mm -hmm. when they were number four in the country, mm -hmm. and we beat them again. So I can honestly say that I'm one of the few coaches in America that has never lost to the University mm -hmm. of Miami. Miami. I'm 3-0, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I hope to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Very good. And then, of course, from East Carolina, I end up going to the University of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I've coached in every football conference mm -hmm. in the country except for the Pac-10 mm -hmm. on the, uh, on the uh, West Coast. Mm -hmm. So that's given me an opportunity to see every brand of football, mm -hmm. uh, all the passes, all mm -hmm. the runs, the different philosophies, mm -hmm. and uh, like I said, I've coached under some uh, mm -hmm. uh, really good coaches, and that's mm -hmm. what has molded me uh, today mm -hmm. to be the coach mm -hmm. that I am today. Because mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, in, in terms of the uh, highest level, the next level, mm -hmm. what do you think about the uh, NFL in terms of well, trying to? Well, I know what type of player it takes to play on the NFL. Mm -hmm. I coached Julius Peppers mm -hmm. at the University of North Carolina, mm -hmm. and obviously he was about the second player taken in the draft. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know the level that you have to work at, which mm -hmm. is very, very hard. Uh, also, we, I have one of my former players here mm -hmm. uh, playing for uh, uh, the Titans, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Waddell. Mm -hmm. uh, he was my special team return man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also at, worked at uh, two pro camps. I went to mm -hmm. the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers mm -hmm. and worked with them uh, as an understudy, you might say. Mm -hmm. I also went with the St. Louis Rams the year they won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, John Bunning, who was teammates of mine, was a head coach at UNC, mm -hmm. uh, went there and worked with them. It was just like an internship mm -hmm. uh, in the St. Louis Rams training camp. Mm -hmm. And the thing that you see, and a, and a lot of guys yeah. don't understand, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you see these guys that are, that are millionaires, mm -hmm. making a whole lot of money, riding around the fancy cars, but they work hard. Mm -hmm. They work hard at their trade. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys think well, once you get into pros, they don't really work hard, they collect mm -hmm. their money. No, those guys practice hard, mm -hmm. they lift weights hard, mm -hmm. and they have to live a straight life off the field because everybody wants to be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I'd love to make a $19 mm -hmm. million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, that guy that's coming out of college, that guy that's under you, he wants your job. Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. guys have to stay on top very of what they're doing. They're very, very competitive mm -hmm. because the money is so great. Mm -hmm and all the glamour and the fame that goes along mm -hmm. with it. So mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to be in that arena, mm -hmm. an opportunity to see that. And, and so now when a young man comes to my office and says, Coach, I want to play pro ball, I can tell him what it will take mm -hmm. for him to get to that level mm -hmm. and what it will take for him to be successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And of course, uh, of course Coach, uh, we're nearing the uh, end of uh, this particular uh, show. And we can only say that we're simply uh, delighted at the uh, information that you've given us, that it has been uh, a very, very full profile, uh, indicating that uh, Tennessee State University is indeed fortunate uh, to have an individual who has uh, the kind of uh, background and the kind of experience that you have and, and seem to be committed to the idea of uh, greatness for Tennessee State University. And of course, I think that uh, there are many, many people that can buy into uh, that kind of philosophy. But now, uh, we've got about a minute, and, mm -hmm. and that'll give you an opportunity over the last minute to uh, give us some kind of final comment, uh, and then we'll be able to call the show well, uh, in. For well, I think it's important uh, that, that, that everyone understands that uh, one person can't build a winning program. Two people can't build a winning program. It takes the administration at Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes the student support. Mm -hmm. It takes the uh, football players that you have to have. It takes the coaches. It takes the alums mm -hmm. that are out in the different cities that see different players. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes the fans here in Nashville to come out and mm -hmm. cheer and, and support the football team. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes dedication on our part mm -hmm. to see that we're bringing the right young people into the program. Mm -hmm. And so my point is that uh, it takes everybody and a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, to contribute mm -hmm. to the success 
of a program. Very good. And of course, let, let me thank you for giving us that excellent information. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.